Here now is Denver Riggleman, former Republican congressman from Virginia. Congressman Riggleman, thanks for being here. You know, 17 Republicans need to vote against Trump for a conviction. All but six voted that the trial was unconstitutional yesterday. So is this a done deal? Yes, it's a done deal. I mean, there's there's not going to be impeachment. I think a lot of this is really simple. And I want to break this down is that the reason that the senators are voting the way that they are or the House voted the way that they did during impeachment is because their voters are telling them to. And that's that's the baseline issue I've been talking about is that this disinformation or this 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 anger has so metastasized within the GOP or within the Republican base that senators and Republicans and those who look at politics as a career are reacting to this in a way that's that's pretty predictable. And uh, there's no reason for them to watch this. There's no reason for them to be engaged because they know how they're going to vote and they believe that their vote, that's how they're going to get reelected. And, and it's, it's a sad state of affairs, but that's politics. But um, if you take away the moral issues that are, that are heinous, if you take away the disinformation siege that led to the Capitol siege months and months months of ridiculous conspiracy theories and influencers like President Trump pushing those conspiracy theories. It all goes back to, will they get voted back into office? And, and that is just the reality of it. I mean, that said, Republican Senator Bill Cassidy switched his vote to support the proceedings. So could some senators still be swayed? I think so. You know, I thought a couple more would. I, you know, I thought the impeachment vote would be between 56 and 59 uh, for conviction. But did you see what happened to Senator Cassidy after that? He was condemned by a state party immediately after that. And you saw what's going on with uh, Lindsey Graham and Tim Scott. They're under the censure uh, threats now. And, th and these are people that defended President Trump. But since they voted to certify the electors, they're going to be censured. So this is what you have. So you have this grassroots sort of little Stalins in the committees that are holding elected representatives hostage for their vote based on the fact that they're going to lose support or maybe people are going to get really mad at them on Twitter. Um, and I'm saying that a little sarcastically, but sort of true. Uh, or they're going to get yelled at in uh, committee meetings or they're going to get yelled at if they go into their communities. I think there's a lot of fear. And I think right now in some politicians, I think it's a synonym for fear. I think if you looked it up in Webster's today, politician would equal fear. It's very difficult to find people right now who are willing to stand up. But seeing Senator Cassidy gave me some hope. Now, some Republicans called Bruce Castor's opening statement yesterday a disaster. What do you make of the overall arguments from the defense so far, and what do you think they need to do today? Tough argument. Uh, I heard you uh, talking about coordination earlier, and that was actually a pretty cool uh, or very brilliant thing to bring up is, did President Trump um, coordinate any of this? And here's the thing. Here's, here's what's easy to prove from the disinformation side, is that if you look at Twitter or Facebook or social media as a coordinating function, and you see him uh, sort of saying the same thing that other people are, and riling people up, and this goes all the way back to May, by the way, uh, you know, all the way back to Obamagate and that conspiracy theory that started from the dark corners of internet, all the way to Mike Flynn in June when he took the oath for where we go, when we go all. Then in July and August, President Trump starting to scream about stop the steal at that point in the election being stolen. Then him spreading rumors about, um, he actually retweeted that Joe Biden killed SEAL Team 6 and Osama bin Laden had a body double. You could go all the way back and look at all of these social media functions and say, is that coordination? And I would humbly submit that's a very strong case uh, for the impeachment managers to make is that, listen, if you're talking about writing up individuals with coordination and you're using disinformation and conspiracy theories and you're spouting them, even about Dominion voting systems and all of this, mm -hmm. and then you culminate it with a speech on January 6th and you tweet at 224 that Vice President Pence needs to do the right thing while the Senate is being sacked or while, while the Capitol is being sacked, that's a strong argument. So it's going to be very difficult for the defense to come over that timeline of events and all that disinformation that was spewed out and President Trump being one of the major influencers for that. And, and Denver, we're out of time, but I want to ask you very quickly. You voted against the first impeachment of President Trump while you were in Congress. You said then Democrats were weaponizing impeachment. What do you think now? You know, I got to tell you, you know, that first impeachment, I think it's a little bit mutually exclusive, but this isn't weaponizing impeachment when the facts are this specific and stark. And, um, you know, that's where I'm at on this right now is that this impeachment needs to happen. All right. Former Republican Congressman Denver Riggleman, thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.